So now my drive belts have arrived. Uh, I bought two, so I've got a spare. And I've already put this one on. I had to make some adjustments because when I measured the distance around here, it ended up being about an inch too short. So I had to lower the whole frame. So what I'll do is I'll show you how that's impacted the whole assembly. So there you go, there's not a, a great deal of difference. All I did was I lowered the cradle itself. It was resting on top of there. Now I've, I've lowered it to there. So I ended up having to take these legs off again. Those legs have been off three times now. And uh, on the opposite side, all I needed to do was to cut about an inch off the bottom of the wood legs. So that was relatively simple. And now that it's all together, I've got uh, enough tension on there. I haven't got it too tight because I found that if I have it too tight, then you get quite a lot of friction. So that's just about right. And also, if the whole thing jams up, at least it doesn't lock and break some of the metal parts. All it's doing is spinning around there and uh, the drive belts are a lot cheaper than any of these components to replace. And it's quite simple to turn the thing off. Righty ho. So here's the motor mounted. So it's mounted on top and I've already shown you how I uh, produce the mount but suffice to say here's the part of it where I gain the tension for this part of the motor which goes to the drive pulleys. So here's the motor driving the, the pulleys for the gearing and this belt here drives the chuck which is on the headstock. I've already covered that. So I get tension by having this set of pulleys able to rock. And I've got this bolt here which is attached all the way through. Let's see if I can get a better shot of it. Yep, so this bolt goes all the way through and this bolt here uh, goes to a threaded hole. So if I tighten this down, the whole thing moves backwards. And when that moves backwards, that puts tension on here. So I've got one this end, and I have one the other end. There we go. And that's how I get tension both on the drive to the chuck and from the motor to this set of pulleys. So it's all pretty stable now. And that's the way it's going to stay, really happy with that. Uh, I'll just run it up now and I'll, I'll show you how it works. Okay, so let's uh, see it running. So this is running nicely and I've got control of the speed here. I've got it on the lowest speed. So what I'm going to do now is engage the back gears here and I'll show you the difference in speed of the chuck compared with how it was just running off these spindles here, off these pulleys here. Now if you recall, all I've got to do is take out two pins and engage the back gear. one pin out okay that's the other pin out so now the chuck is spinning independently from the rest of the gearing now if I engage the back gear now have a look how slow this spins now so you've got this spinning really slowly so you've got a lot of torque um, 
Okay, so I've already got a job in mind for the lathe. Uh, it's a very simple job, so I'll show you that in the next video. So let me just show you a few more of the features. So the cutting tools, you can rotate them by slackening this lever here. And I've got a steel cutting tool on this side. And then if I spin it around, I've got an aluminium cutting tool. Now my neighbor, he was a professional uh, engineer uh, working with uh, lathes and also with milling devices and he's told me that these particular cutting tools here when they've got a rounded edge that's specifically for aluminium in addition to that <clears throat> I've got a, a nut here and a nut there if I slacken them off then this whole arrangement here Will swivel so and then I can cut in at an angle very useful so the lathe itself dates from about 1941 so that's over 80 years old now which is staggering when I think about that now these bearings here they're plain bearings so what that means is there's a material in here, I think it's bronze. And uh, if I take these screws off here, then I can get to the bearing itself. I can show you that. Okay. So there's the bearing itself. There's the shaft, and you can see the different colour material. And it's, it just sits on that material there. So clearly, if you're not careful, you'll get some wear and tear. Which brings me on to the first point that uh, was given to me by uh, a very helpful chap. And that is that don't overspeed the chuck itself. Those bearings are good for about 800 RPM maximum. Now, in addition to that, you notice this little brass cap here. Now, that unscrews. And if I take that off, basically what you do is you put some oil in there. And it comes out of this hole in the bottom there. And that lubricates the shaft. And there's enough space in there to put a few drops of oil in and basically it trickle feeds the chuck itself as it's moving now clearly it's not very big so you need to check that regularly on one of the documents it says uh, check it before you use it every time so i'm just going to put these bolts back in now now what i also found the last time i took these off is that if I were if I were to torque these down as tight as I could, then this would actually put pressure on the bearing and cause friction here, which makes it more difficult to turn. So what I assume from that is that there's an optimum of torque that you put on this bearing here so that it holds it in place without going too far which i think gives it the uh, option of um, when the bearing wears down a little bit giving it a bit more tension and therefore giving it a bit more life so i think it's pretty staggering that after 80 years there's still some uh, availability to put some some more tension on here it hasn't worn down completely so one of the other features that i've seen on one of the videos is if you look through this hole here there now that hole 
goes all the way through to the chuck at the other end you can just see it so that enables you to put a long rod up to that diameter all the way through so you feed it in from here and you can have a long rod going all the way through which is uh, useful in some circumstances i'd imagine